I'm Scott Lanningham at World of Watson, joined right now by next to me Dan Kalistad, who is CEO at Targeted Grain Management, and next to him Sean Moe, who is an Informic software architect at IBM. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining. Thanks. Thank you. Dan, I wonder if you could talk a bit about the TGM business and, and, and the importance of, of taking care of the grain supply. We have a mission to transform the grain industry from one that is now impure delivery of product to one that is, has very high purity and it's a food safety issue. So what we have to do is go out and capture each bin of grain, preserve it properly, and then trace that to the end user. And I won't give too much of this away because we'll get into it, but you're talking about being able to do something that was now that was impossible just a few years ago because of the technology did not exist yet? Yes, and there's two major problems. We did not have the technology because to do this properly you need very good relative humidity sensors and you need high performance computing. And the weak link, unfortunately, is the operator because the cycle of grain storage is only once per year so it takes decades really to accumulate the understanding of how to do the things because you're always interacting with the weather. So the weather impacts growing crops, but it also is necessary to uh, align with the weather to turn fans on to aerate grain to prevent the problems. I see, so I mean, we all know that weather can impact crops in the field and how, and, and how devastating it can be when things go wrong. And I think the numbers you were telling me, 75% of, of the human main source of human nutrition is in grain. Yes. So the preserving of that grain, the taking care of the grain afterwards, weather is still impacting it? Through yes, yes. Moisture levels and all kinds of things. Like yes, that. because when grain is put in a bin, if you do not aerate it, and freezing and other kinds of preservation aren't practical or suitable. The only one that's suitable is to turn a fan on and off and blow air through there. But because um, of thermodynamics and so forth, you really have to master the, the physics of air movement, the psychometrics or the properties of air itself, temperature and humidity, and then the biology of the seed, because the seed is alive and we want to keep it alive. And if we blow air through there properly, the seeds will never spoil you can keep them for years. But if you don't do that properly, then you have an environment set up where molds can grow and insects can flourish. And then, because we're dealing with very large volumes, so we get a percentage of it that's molded at the top, often a crust. When it's unloaded, this just gets mixed in with the good grain and it's delivered, and it's a very, very bad thing for our health. Wow. You know, Sean, I know that uh, the, the partnership with IBM is an important part of how TGM is tackling this, solving this problem. And, and what, 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 would you, what would you both like to say about the elements of that partnership? I know IoT and Informix are key elements there. Uh, just the value of, of being able to partner together in the first place. Uh, from our perspective, it's, uh, it, it's been quite an interesting partnership. The, uh, the use case I wasn't familiar with at all until I met Dan a year or so ago. Uh, but I live in rural Kansas, so I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm surrounded by, yeah. by grain farmers. But, but towards the point, um, you know, we, we have a good solution uh, working together. I think we, we're, we're focusing on capturing, storing, maintaining, and analytics at the edge of the IoT network at the bins. But we also have a solution where we can help him grow and, as he's starting to collect data from thousands of farmers into his data center, into his cloud architecture, to help him you know, uh, scale those analytics to, to, to bigger levels to help solve the, the larger problem. He's, he's tackling the, the problem at the farmer level right now, but he's, he's, he's obviously you can see he's got plans for, uh, for impacting the, our, our nation's food system, and so you know, he's going to need a bigger partner, uh, and, and we're, we're, we're wanting to be that partner. How, well, how big is the, the problem, Dan? How, how do you describe it to people, numbers-wise? Today, there's more than 500 million bushels of grain that spoils with mold, has mycotoxins, and at least part of it that is mixed in with our food and our feed. And if you were to put that into a train, 
4,000 bushels per car load, the train would stretch from San Francisco to Denver. Oh my. And so not only is it an enormous amount of grain, but there are health consequences to the way the system works now, clearly for livestock and people. Yes. I would assume. Yes. We have much feedback from our customers who will feed animals, and if they run out of this grain and buy off-the-shelf grain, if you will, that's not been properly stored, they can sometimes take three days to get their hogs to eat it. <laughs> so talk about how the technology then helps you with the, you know, the, the effective aeration you're talking about and, and the, the whole picture, the sensors that have to come to play in the analytics, because there's a lot of variables in solving this problem, right? Yes, and the biggest thing to understand is that we use a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach. So in the industry, many have put in temperature cables, for instance, and if the grain starts to heat, which is a spoiling process, then they'll do something. They might move it to another bin, they might turn a fan on to try to stop it. We don't watch the grain, what we watch is the weather, mm. because if we turn the fan on, when the weather gives us the right attributes, we then control the grain and we prevent anything from starting. So we basically are managing the environment in that entire bin for each seed. So once you understand how this does, it, it actually lowers energy costs, it lowers labor, and you prevent the losses. I see, so you're moving from, as you said, historically reactive to now proactive Correct. approach. Can you talk more, bo both of you, about Informix and its role in all of this? Sure. Um, Informix uh, is, you know, is, is a long history of, uh, of database technology with you know, uh, thousands of customers worldwide. Uh, but we, we're a unique solution for, for inter, Internet of Things and solutions like DAN for a variety of reasons. One, uh, we run on, on pretty much any architecture, whether it's small ARM chips, Raspberry Pi to, to, to big Intel, um, Spark power servers. Um, and, and towards the, the key aspect of DAN solution is about sensors. And so Informix has a, uh, we, we have a unique in the industry time series solution that allows us to store and maintain time values uh, very effectively, very efficiently. And so um, all of our IoT solutions, when you think about it, every sensor is a time, generates a time value in a payload. And being able to deal with time-based data very efficiently is, is important. Dan solution is actually reading every minute in every bin. It's reading the moisture content, the, the temperature and humidity. And then he's got a, a weather solution, which also reading weather data every minute. So there's a, you know, that, you think of it on the surface, okay, every minute's not a big deal, but when you've got thousands of bins, thousands of farms, you're generating a lot of data, and being able to effectively manage that time data is, is, is critical. So that, that, that's a key value that we bring. Um, we also bring the capability of um, uh, a large variety, the, the largest number of data availability solutions in the industry. So we can move that data using our technology from the edge to the data center, to the cloud, seamlessly, without having to have any third-party software. And the last solution is really about application development. Or, uh, uh, we have a hybrid story where we're able to store natively, I mentioned time series, but a as you can guess, relational SQL type data, but also NoSQL JSON data, which is very common in sensors and IoT type scenarios. And then lastly, we have a, a REST interface and we're able to deal with MQTT data, which is another sensor uh, protocol that allows data to be effectively inserted into the database. So what right now Dan is, uh, is, is working with um, uh, time series data, we've, we've talked about, um, and, and relational data of course, but we've, we've talked about pushing data using MQTT because we have the availability to do that. So we, we have sort of a wide variety of, of, of ways to store data. We have the time series, we have the, uh, the, the small footprint, no administration, and we have the data availability options. So you kind of put all those together and, and we offer a great technology solution for, for what he's trying to do. It sounds like a, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, if I might add, um, I worked with Informix at a low level for years just for our accounting and found it to be very solid and so forth. What we're doing now is we're taking the Informix engine, putting it out at each grain storage site at the edge, and we're embedding our logic into it, and they have what they call SPL, 
So we can actually take the logic of how to run a fan and embed it right in that and add value to that engine. And then it does so many things effectively for us at very low cost, for instance, replication. Everything is moved up to the data center automatically for us. And this is so important because we're collecting data by the minute. We're choosing to run a fan by the minute. I don't think anybody else does that. But as a, one reason is you can have a relatively small bin with a relatively small fan. And if you have the wrong temperatures in there and you blow warm air on cold grain, in one minute you can add water in one hour, you might add 100 gallons of water condensing in that layer, which will then mold. So to know what the weather is to prevent that and to remember what you're doing, then we take and move all that history up to the data center so that whoever buys that grain actually can see that environment would never support mold growth or insect activity, even if it's eight or 12 months and we can certify that. Wow, it's such pioneering work and such, such an important uh, area of focus as, as you've made so clear. And I'm wondering as a closing thought, is it sounds to me like there's wonderful potential uh, parallel applications for this model in with other types of food and, 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 and other perishable but non-food items and anything that, that where weather impacts the storage of things, would you say? Yes, yes. And we should be the low cost provider. And we have the advantage of having access to a huge array of points throughout most of the grain growing areas to collect the most accurate ground-based weather data that's available. And the more accurate we can be, the better we can keep the food. So that's what we're doing. And partnering with IBM and IBM now with the Weather Channel, there's even more potential there for yes. great yes. analytics for this. And we're a small company and we don't have the resources and the reach, so it's nice to have IBM in our corner. Well, that's terrific, and I'm sure they're glad they have you to partner with too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been quite an interesting partnership so far, so yeah, we're looking forward to 2017 and as this newest solution gets out in the field and, and we get some, some, some good feedback. All right, thank you so much for making time for this today. Nice. Both thank you, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Scott. It. Very nice, thank Again, you. down at the end is Sean Moe, an Informix software architect for IBM, and next to me, Dan Kalistad, CEO of Targeted Grain Management. I'm Scott Lanningham, and we're IBM.